previously on an Abundant Harvest homestead. Creativity strikes once again, and Papa Pepper begins to mill some reclaimed fence pickets to use as his interior walls. Also, he's able to borrow a tractor with a backhoe attachment to help dig to find his water line and run it to the root cellar. By the end of the episode, Monster Truck found himself in a hole. And now for your featured presentation, which seems like it's going to be a lot of work. But I'm never, I'm never burying anything without this in the future. Without What happened to your yard last night? It rained. And what else? Oh, we got dug up. You got dug up. Got a couple projects I'm working on. And before I frame this in and put the rebar in and get ready for the concrete pour, there's some plumbing I gotta do first because I want to have water in the outdoor kitchen we build on top of the root cellar. Now there's a water line heading from the house here. It comes out somewhere under there and it runs past where Pinky's milking up into the garden and to the poultry pens. My goal is to tap into that and that's what this trench is for. I got some roots over there to cut through and then a little hump here and actually, when I had the little tractor last night, I had to straddle it carefully with the front tires, which are narrower, smaller, closer together, and I tipped in a little bit. Um, but when you've got a front end loader and a backhoe attachment, I was able to, to get out of it. Um, Mama Pepper and some were watching from inside because it was a downpour. Some of the little peppers are out here. Monster truck was in the hole, or next to the hole looking for the blue line and then carefully between the propane tank the underground line for the propane that comes up into the house and this tree and my house I had to get that thing and maneuver it out of here which thankfully I was able to do but today I'm gonna see if I can locate this and maybe tie it all together I don't think I have everything on hand to actually run this but I'll run to town to get it because that stuff that I just can't free source, um, you know, and I can't go to the wild and get the stuff I need. So if that's the case, I'll run to town, pick up what I need, and get this party started. How'd milking go this morning? 
good. We're only milking once a day right now, and she's not giving us as much right now, but we don't have much grass either, so. And what's our intention? To dry her up. Yeah, we're actively trying to dry her up. Um, I was supposed to get a bull over last week, but that fell through for the time being, so we'll wait another month and get it over then. Sometimes I'll bring a kitten along for milking, plus they're used to milk because they're still nursing off their mom sometimes, even though she's trying to wean them a little bit. But they'll get some of the first squirts and different stuff, and then they just get used to all the animals and they have fun when they come over. Darling, what's in there? Check out my sourdough, darling. Whoa, what are you doing with that today? We're gonna make some sourdough pancakes. Oh, darling, I love your sourdough pancakes. Are they gonna be thickies? Maybe? I don't know if they're gonna be thick. They're, they're a little bit thick. They're not super thick, but they're really delicious. And we're gonna add blueberries today. Ooh, excellent. So. We should add mulberries sometime, too. I guess we do have frozen mulberries as well. Yeah. But very cool. And why do you like sourdough? Because it helps us get more nutrients out of our, our flour. It's not the bread of sorrows. <laughs> the enriched white bread. So, and it's more, helps us to digest our, it's more digestible, I guess, in this, in this way. And so it makes me glad. I'm glad you do things like that, because then I can eat good while I do other things. <laughs> yep, and I'm also going to be doing some sauerkraut today and starting some fermented carrots. I did already do... I did already do um, some fermented cauliflower that I tried. I tried one plain, and then I tried one with um, peppercorns, garlic, and a bay some bay leaves. And I didn't really like that one that well. I like the plain one better. Well, um, this... It, it, it. The process kicks up the spice quite a bit too and kind of gives it a zing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But then, um, what else did I do? We did some pickles, some fermented pickles. Those are really tasty. The kids really liked them as well. But um, I'm going to try to like keep doing a few fermented things throughout the week to keep us getting some raw vegetables and, of course, fermented as well so that we can get some good nutrients in our bodies throughout the weeks. Awesome, darling. Thank you. Before I get to hand trenching some of that water line, I wanted to start this process um, because it's going to take a couple days. And stain can be rather expensive to buy for wood. I'm thinking of taking my boards for this project, burning them a little bit, just a bit, sanding them, and then staining them so they're back to this type of color. But I want a consistent color. Right now, they're very highly inconsistent. If I put them up with just kind of pulling them off of stacks, I'd have entire patches of the wall that would just be different shades. And I'd rather have something be kind of uniform. So to do that, I don't want to spend a whole bunch on stain. I can pick up steel wool. Now this one, I, I paid five bucks for this big pack. And then some vinegar. And you can make a pretty cool stain that can actually put a barn wood type effect on it. But I've got to let it go for like two or three days before I even see if it worked. So at the moment, <clears throat> I'm just going to take some of these steel wools, drop them inside of this jug. And then add vinegar to cover it. Years and years ago, we were doing a project up outside of Branson, Missouri. And the goal was a rather rustic kind of barnwood looking floor but we were starting with brand new material. Well, brand new material is a far cry from the barnwood, but we were able to do it, and rather than spending a whole bunch on buying new stain, because sometimes to get stain, man, you're looking at 50, 70 bucks just for an application. If I could do the same thing for under 10 bucks, pretty much under five with what I'm actually using, I much more highly prefer that And right under free, um, cheap, is my second favorite. So that's what we got here. It'll actually go quite a ways. I'm going to add just a little bit more. And I can dilute it later, but again, if I want consistency, I'm going to want to make sure that uh, whatever I have is going to be the strength I use it at. So I'll probably do a test on this, see how I like it after two or three days, and then um, 
dilute it. Now I screwed it on at the moment just to kind of shake it up, make sure that that steel wool gets saturated. And then I'm gonna kind of leave this open. I don't want dust and stuff getting in here, but I want gases to be able to escape. So I'm just gonna kind of set that on part way there. And now I've got an empty vinegar jug, but I can use that for jug fishing. Um, we've been doing a lot of that on our fishing channel. And I really like this size jug for jug fishing. So everything gets used, it all has a purpose. Wow, wow. I asked Monster Truck to get things ready. Big pickaxe, little pickaxe, spade shovel, rake, couple loppers. Oh, he got me shears. I'll need the actual loppers. I'll explain them what those are. Those ain't gonna work good for the roots. The other ones would. I should probably also get a smaller spade shovel and one of my uh, chop saws, but I'm gonna see if I can trench through the rest of these parts by hand. And there I gotta cut through roots. And here I gotta find the water line. red pepper run up to the garden and crank the water because I don't remember exactly where this was um, when I bury my new water line I'm gonna put my water line about here and I'm gonna put an indicator above there maybe it'll be some ribbon or something but maybe six inches up from it I'm gonna put an indicator that way especially if I'm digging with heavy equipment when I hit that I know I'm gonna be close that's important that stuff I didn't know when I did this the first time and I'm not sure exactly what angle I come out of the house heading up to the garden, but whatever it is, it's running this way. I'm gonna tie into it perpendicular, but I can't just connect to it. I'm gonna have to dig back on each side of it, cut it, tip it up, splice it in, and run it that way. So I think I'm gonna go back and get the uh, tractor again and dig through this area looking for it. One good thing about that is if I've got my tractor teeth, and they're looking for something running this way, it's more likely that I'll get on each side of it and expose it without puncturing it, where if I'm going this way, it's more likely I'll pull it and break it. If I break it, I can shut it off right here under the house and splice into it anyway. That'll just be where my splice is, but I'd rather not. I'd rather cut in there fresh and do what I need to do. So I think I'm gonna grab that tractor and work through this, but I think first, 
Mama might have lunch ready. Oh, darling. See, this is what I meant by thick. That's not like regular pancakes. I guess, yeah, it's a little bit thicker. I've been at hotels things. lately. They're sad. <laughs> okay. Oh, sourdough plus blueberries. And these are blueberries from like a field right by our house, aren't they? No, these are the store bought ones. We finished all those. They were so good we ate them all. These are from the store. The <laughs> 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 but, um,. I'm gonna switch up and use the tractor. It's available, so I'm gonna grab that quick. So I'm gonna eat a couple of these and get back to work, and uh, I don't know, could get it done today. Okay. We hope. I'll see. We found what we were looking for. What color is it, kids? Blue. Blue. And what color were we looking for? Blue. And I, I knew it was here somewhere. We found it. So, cool thing is, if you notice, I stopped digging with that tractor and got this out when I was within inches of there. So I knew about where it was as far as depth. Now we're running straight from about the middle of the house, which is what I figured over to the garden and I knew we wouldn't be too close to this tree. Uh, number one, I'd have to go through a whole bunch of roots to put in there in the first place. Number two, if I had gone too close and took out too many roots, it would have been dead by now. So we are good. We're good. I'm going to have to go sideways each way and I'm probably going to make this one V in. So you can see I started removing from here first. That's going to be fine to get that thing up. I'm going to have to go quite a distance on each side of it. So now that I know how deep it is, I can remove some of this. 
I'll splice into it and then send our guy up this way. Um, this is excessively deep for where we live. It's closer to like where we'd bury a water line in Wisconsin, I think would be like, I forget. Something like more like three feet deep up there. Don't have to go quite that, quite that deep here because uh, of winter. And I'm probably gonna have like a clean out valve or a shutoff valve, I mean, for it that I can kill the water to the thing in the winter. Um, that way our outdoor kitchen root cellar won't have water in the winter if it's gonna get cold. If I wanna shut it off and clear out the line, I can do that, so. Today is a happy day for our people, kids. Now I've gotta be able to splice into that. Ah, uh, are you gonna put a splitter on it? I am. So it goes one this way, one that way, and this way? Yes, correct, correct. But I'm gonna have to dig back from here for a bit first. So I think I'm gonna remove back to about here. We just gotta keep that kind of marked where it is to make sure I don't lose it. It's risks versus benefits. It's always an evaluation of your risks versus your potential benefits. Digging this by hand would have been huge for me. Incredibly difficult. This was so much better, so much better. There's more risks with it. It's a property. Um, probably less, more risk to my body being beat up if I just did it by hand, but here, now here, I snagged it with one of the teeth. Um, you can see it's not straight anymore. So it had to pull a little bit, okay? It pulled a bit. Underneath there, everything looks good with the shutoff valve. Monster truck and I just ran up to the garden. Everything's fine up there. I don't think there's any issues. Um, I don't feel any water. Sometimes when water's running, you can feel it on something like this, but now, this is gonna be my splice spot. I'm gonna take out a whole portion here where I got this slight, well, it's not compromised. Yeah, it's not compromised, but it is misshapen. So we're gonna find a nice spot up in here to cut this splice into it and then run that way. I just got to uh, measure my distance and I'm pretty sure I don't have on hand what I need. So I'm gonna go double check. Interesting. I don't know, son, do we have enough hose on hand? I'll grab this if you grab that. I think there's some water pieces up in there. Of straight? Of straight. Okay, we'll start with this. This is why I personally do not like to throw out pieces of stuff. It could just be. It'll be exactly what you need later. We don't know yet. But this would be absolutely awesome if it was. I gotta check, check what kind of couplings and other stuff I got on hand too. is pretty awesome that I had those couple of rolls already. Um, I decided to still pick up a five foot section for five bucks. Um, if I didn't have any of that stuff on hand, which I had in my you know, free source overflow available to use creatively pile, um, it would have cost me 60 bucks to get a roll of it. Um, I was already 
you're gonna have to pick up some hardware for this project and I was thinking of using just some of the little clamps that you slide inside and then clamp on the outside but I'm not really set up to do that so I decided to go with the shark bites so I've got my splicer for the straight section my T for the T intersection and a shutoff valve to finish it with and that's like 70 bucks worth of stuff almost so I'm really glad I didn't have to spend an extra 60 to get a big roll of this I also <clears throat> was gonna use ribbon to mark about six to eight inches above my water line. <clears throat> so this is gonna be for, if I ever have to dig up any of this again, if I've got my water line buried underground and I've got something running six to eight inches above it, I will see that first and I'll know that I'm close as far as depth and I'll know that I'm dead on as far as where, you know, longitude, latitude, where it is. So that's gonna help. And I was originally gonna pick up some ribbon or something but then I saw that this rope here for a 50 foot section of it was five bucks for a hundred feet was six dollars so this extra cost me a buck this much was five bucks this much cost me one extra buck I'll probably use that extra bucks worth here and then still have some good rope on hand I thought this would be better than the ribbon it's gonna deteriorate less over time and be pretty good pretty visible I will see it um, but I'm never, I'm never burying anything without this in the future, without something like this, an indicator ahead of time. I've seen it done now that I've been doing things for a while, but when I was initially burying these water lines years ago, I had no frame of reference for it, so I didn't do it. So if you're burying water lines or burying electrical or anything, think about putting an indicator above it, six, eight inches, whatever it may be, but have something where, you know, especially if you're digging with heavy equipment, that you're able to notice, oops, here we go, we're really close now. We found where it is, you know, longitude, latitude, north to south, east to west, and now we're getting close to the depth. Too much exhilarating work to continue with for a moment. Oh, all of these roots are the guys I'm blasting through. Sharp axe. Sharp axe really helps. And I'm just gonna bring a narrow trench through. I don't need a wide trench. That's just the size of the bucket. I'm just gonna bring a narrow one through, but I'm gonna rest up before I cut through that. And if it's too big a one to go through, I can just go under and then scoop out all the loose stuff I just made. But right now, let's make a couple connections. I'm gonna see if I can get this buried today. It's a blessing to be able to have access to a machine like this. I don't want to abuse it. So I want to get this done quickly so I can return that. Oh, here we go. Country folks, or folks thinking about moving to the country, make sure between you and the nearest town that you know some people. That's gonna help. For instance, I did not have one of these for cutting it, um, cutting into my water line. I could have picked one up when I was in town, didn't want the extra expense right now. Thankfully, I know a neighbor much closer than town who has one I can use. In fact, when I picked up that uh, brad nailer in the last video, I let him know, because he's got a pile of rigid batteries, and he was talking about possibly getting one. Well, if he needs one before he buys one, now he knows I got one available that he can use, just like he has things available I can use. Here I got the um, water shut off. 
where it comes from the house this way. I got a shut off valve, I shut that off. I open up the garden. When I cut into here, there's probably be some gushing out. I got some wipes and a drying towel. So I'm just gonna splice into it. Then I think I'm gonna splice this five foot straight section in. Um, and then I'll go to the next section and bring that all the way to the end and up. Um, I'll get this stuff here spliced, make sure I got my trench where I want it, finish cutting out the roots and wrap this thing up so I can bury it with my rope. So shark bites are some rather simple technology. I think I've got them all right. Um, and before I do anything, before I bury this, I'm gonna make sure there's no leaks. So I might even put like a, uh, a sheet of paper or something underneath here just to make sure there's no leaks since I already got wet ground underneath. And sometimes in your hoses, you're gonna have a lot of water when you cut this up. So it's good to have like a runoff into a deeper hole. Um, if you're able to do that, it's easier because sometimes you'll have a smaller hole, a lot of water, and it'll just fill up. But I like the way this looks so far. We'll add a coupling onto this one and then tie it into that. And I'm gonna cut a fresh end on there because I can. I wanted to show you these shark pipes anyway. This and then pull that whole spool back. Just walk it down the trench, walk it down the trench. Uh, right about there should be good. We're good. I'm going to give this a fresh cut.
This one was almost long enough on its own, but I picked up that five foot straight section just because um, I did have extra, but I thought maybe it'd be best just to use a $5 straight section, so that's what I did. I'm gonna put this on the end so I can shut it off before I finish making this trench just a little shallower in the high spots. But I wanna make sure that we don't have any leaks there, so I'm gonna attach this, have it shut off. Um, I'll wind up covering this so that no dirt or debris gets in here, and then when I want to attach it to the inside stuff, I'll just have a shark bite ready to go. And that'll make it easier for the inside uh, hose and sink. Whew. You ready for it, son? Okay. All right, let's do it. When it came time to turn the water back on, I had this valve here shut off and I left the one in the garden on. So that way when I open that, it wasn't just a hard ram into this, that initially the water was bypassing this area. And then I went up there and slowly shut off the valve in the garden. Now I'm gonna check all these. This looks really good. I see no signs of any moisture coming out. I thought it was good, but before I bury this, you know, I've got to make sure this is right. That there are no leaks on any of this. And then also, when you start filling back in, especially if you have heavy machinery, what you don't want is just a bunch of rocks coming down and slamming into it. So we're gonna kind of tuck this down, bury it by hand first, and then start shoving some more in. Then we're gonna run our rope as an indicator, and then we're going to kind of use that to smooth the rest out and make it flat, fill the rest in. It's gonna be really time saving. It looks like I can accomplish it all today. I got a couple high notes to hit in here so that it's down deep enough for me. Again, was able to go narrow here through all those roots. Some big old roots through there because there was a tree right here before. Um, the only reason we went wider back here was we had the bucket on the tractor, the backhoe attachment. So that's easier though when you're going by hand. And then here, let's just test and make sure. I still see no leaks, but let's turn it on and then turn it off. What's one thing you noticed about that? The air was coming through it. There was air coming through it, yep. So now we've got a fully full of water line there. And uh, I'm gonna recheck everything over here again. Make my little grooves and then, yeah. Then we can cover it up, child. This is gonna be so much better too, having that rope in there. Yeah. Um, I also have running from under my house over to there, an electrical line. And from memory, I think I knew where it was and I thought I would be fine digging where I was digging with this machine. I never found it. It's not hooked up to the power yet. I actually have electrical ran to our lean-to on the shipping container, all the way up to the last garden faucet, to the poultry faucet, and to the root cellar storm shelter. But I do wish I would have had an indicator for where that electrical line is. Even though it's not hooked up to power, I'd rather not rip it out if I didn't have to. That'd be that signal ahead of time, that warning ahead of time, which would be better. Um, we're also gonna do some solar, just because in the event of a storm, um, you're gonna be in the storm shelter. Yeah, we have flashlights, but it'll be nice just to have a backup with the solar, flip on some lights and stuff. And then also have a battery bank where if we have an extended power outage in the house, we can run the house, fridge, and freezers off of the root cellar and outdoor kitchen. That wasn't completely my idea, <laughs> but it's smart, you know. So all right, let's get this going. This is exciting.